It's a cactus. But you know on Christmas and you hang the thing over the door. Mistletoe. It's, it's a mistletoe. Cactus. So today. Hi everybody, I'm Michael. Today I'm here with my client Amy, who also just happens to be my sister. And today we're gonna to be talking to you about how you can take care of these two wonderful plants. But before we, we go into that, I wanna I wanna see if Amy can guess at their names. What do you think that what do you what would you call these plants? They are two different plants. I would oh they are? Yes. Okay. That's why we're doing this video. Well, that's news to me, but I would call them the seed bean plants. Because okay. they so, look like the so, seed beans I've seen on the show okay. chopped. So wrong. But I'm gonna give her a clue. They are cactus. Both of them are a cactus. And one of them, big clue. It's a pencil. A pencil. Cactus. Ta-da! Who said she wasn't smart? So this is the pencil cactus. And believe, believe you not, this is a cactus that is similar, but not the same. This one, I'll give you another clue. It's a cactus. But you know on Christmas and you hang the thing over the door. Mistletoe. It's, it's a mistletoe. So today we're going to be telling you about these these cactus. They're very very easy to grow as house plants. This one, if you could hold it up, Amy, for everyone. Uh, well, it's not. Oh God, you're a linebacker. Andrew, you're crushing the poor little things. These are tough, but see how it, how it hangs. It cascades. Isn't that beautiful? And the mistletoe cactus. That's one of its characteristics. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's put that down, and we'll we'll uh, go on to the next part, which we always like to do on our thing is. Hey Amy, you ready to dig in? Sure am, Mike. Let's grow! The pencil cactus and mistletoe cactus make for great houseplants. We've had these for years and I wanted to come over here and do a video with my sister because I want to gift these to her because these are very easy and you don't have to water them very much. And so I wanted to, to share a little share a little bit of fun with you and do a video here at your home. So about this plant, this cactus here goes by the botanical name Euphorbia turricale, and this, the mistletoe, goes by the botanical name Ripsalis bassifera. So they're different genus and species, but they have a lot of similarities. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come in a little bit closer and show you the pencil cactus up close, and we'll tell you about its plant characteristics, and then we'll switch over and we'll talk to you about the mistletoe characteristics, uh, so that so you get an idea of how these plants will grow in your home. But Amy, why do you think we're wearing all this protective gear? Because they look so nice. <laughs> well, thanks to Farm thank, thank you to Farmers Defense who gave us these to try out. We've done some videos on that. We're using these because we're doing a repotting of the pencil cactus and the sap on both the pencil cactus and the mistletoe cactus can be an irritant. So that's why you want to wear gloves and you also want to wear a sleeve if you can so you don't get any of that on your skin. What you'll most likely find, some people won't be anything, some, but other people who have sensitive skin may get a rash. So what we'll do now is we're going to, we're going to focus on the pencil cactus, we'll switch over and show, you, show this up, up close for you, and then we'll switch over to the mistletoe cactus and tell you a little bit about its plant characteristics, and then we're going to go into the repotting and then we're going to talk about plant care for both of these which are very similar so you have everything you need to do for taking care of your plants all right so now we'll switch and we'll come back over and show you this up close okay i have my sister amy ready to point out all the features of the pencil cactus so let's get to it again the, the botanical name for this plant is euphorbia turricale and she's native to tropical africa she is a succulent which means she stores water in her leaves and stems. And a really cool feature about this plant is that she has these bright yellow leaves. And Amy's gonna show you right there, but we're also two that are coming up from the base, or three actually, are coming up here. And that is how the pencil cactus grows. There'll be this bright yellow green branch that comes out with these little cute lemon lime leaves. And those leaves over time will fall off. And and that is one characteristic of this plant that is different than the mistletoe. The mistletoe doesn't grow like this. It never has these little leaves, these short-lived leaves. It's, it's really unique because of its pencil-like appearance, right, Amy? Yes. Yeah? And it has this funky growth habit. We're gonna repot ours because we've had her in that 
that terracotta pot forever and she she needs she needs a new pot to grow in and we're gonna help stake her again because she's just gotten so big and uh, lanky in some areas but this plant is also very easy to propagate we'll talk a little bit about that now all you have to do is actually cut a, a branch off of, of the plant a thicker branch than that Amy like maybe yeah further in a me yeah there's a medium-sized branch there and you can get a little thicker than that and when you do that all you have to do is cut it make sure you spray alcohol on your your cutting utensils and your hands before you're you're cutting but in this plant you definitely want to wear gloves because you don't want to get any of that sap on you uh, and then you let it sit out for about a week or so to harden the edge and you can just stick it in soil and it will grow. This was actually a cutting that I got and I grew from a cutting and I, and I just put it in the, the cactus soil and off she went. So it's a, it's a really, really cool plant. It does have some toxicity to pets, which the ASPA has noted, but the ASPA, uh, the, the plant society, I mean, sorry, the plant society, the pet society said that the main thing is, is that it can cause a little stomach distress and some irritation, but it is not a highly toxic plant to dogs and cats, but it does have some toxicity to them, to the pets. So you wanna be careful if you have any um, pets at home that you keep this up and away from them. The mistletoe, believe it or not, the ASPCA does not consider that plant toxic to dogs and cats. I thought it would have because it also has a sap, but it's 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 not toxic to them, non-toxic, which is which is kind of interesting. So I think that's the main features I wanted to tell you about the pencil cactus. But there is one more thing I want to tell you about. Uh, out in the sun, some of these can get very red, a very reddish color, red orange color. You can just go on and on about pencil cactus for house plants. It's super tough. We don't have any real issues with it. And we'll go into plant care in a minute. But what we want to do now is we're going to talk a little bit about the mistletoe cactus which actually is an epiphyte and she's native to South America. Again, the botanical name for this plant is Ripsalis bassifera. And look at those, look at those long, long arms. Aren't they beautiful? You like it, Amy? Yes. It's cool, right? And it, don't they look similar? I mean, it's just that- Very similar. Yeah, they, that it's just that this one never gets upright. It will tend to flop over and grow down, downwards. So it makes great for putting on a shelf and having it hang down as these you know, long, delicate stems, and they'll just branch out over time. I actually got this as a cutting from my friend Jose at work. Thank you, Jose. And I took a, a, a cutting, I don't know, a few years ago, and it probably was about six inches long, and all this came from, all, all of her grew from that. She's just she's just so easy to, to grow. And Amy, can you show up, bring that piece where you can see the aerial roots? Actually, no, over here in the front, on the edge of the table, at the very end of the plant, at the base, you see all those little light white roots? Isn't that cool, everybody? You can see she has a lot of these roots where you can actually just cut a, you know, a six inch piece there, let it harden for a week and put that in the soil and she'll root. You don't even necessarily need rooting hormone. These are very easy to propagate. So, you know, it's a real easy plant to take care of. They, they, we're going into plant care in a sec after we do the repotting, but it's it's just a really, really cool house band, super unique looking. You know, one of them is more upright and structural and interesting, the pencil cactus, but the cascading of the mistletoe is just so beautiful. So, so pretty. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and do the repotting, and then we'll go into plant care and tell you a little bit about these plants and how you can take care of them in your home. To do your repotting, you're gonna need several things. You're gonna need a larger container here, and you're gonna need a dryer sheet, a used dryer sheet uh, to put over the drain hole. Can you show them that, Amy? That we have a big drain hole down below. So can you tip that? So we have a big drain hole here. So these are great to help keep the dirt from going out. So can you place that in there so folks can see it? This is a little, a little plant hack that we like to do. And there you go. And now that'll, that'll help let this, the water drain, but it won't let the soil all kind of push out into your saucer. Now you can use any terracotta pot or another or another grow pot, a plastic pot to repot your, your cactus. But we like terracotta because this plant, and we'll go into plant care in a minute, this plant likes to dry out. So terracotta is great at pulling water out. So now that we've talked about the, the dryer sheet and the pot, you also need several other things to do the repotting. You need a cactus mix. Ta-da, that's good. Thank you, Amy. You need some worm castings, which I can see here and some perlite. And we also use a mycorrhizae. This is really cool, it's a mycorrhizal 
fungal and bacterial enhancer to the soil, which helps the plant's roots uptake nutrients, and we highly recommend this. We've been using the Bigfoot brand for a while. This is really cool, and we'll show you what we do in a, in a second with that. So for your ratio of your potting mix, we like to do 80-10-10, 80% of the cactus mix mixed with 10% perlite and 10% worm castings, and this is great. We feel that the, the worm castings make a wonderful soil profile for your plants, and, and, it, and in this ratio, it's gonna drain well which is what this plant needs. So what we're gonna to start to do now is we're gonna put four cups of four cups to start out of the, of the soil in here, the cactus. If you can start putting it in there, Amy. There's one. I'm gonna get. Two. Three. Four. Okay, so now we're half of the eight cups we need. We're only halfway, but now what we want to do is we want to mix stuff. So what we want to do is take a half cup of the perlite, if you can put that in there, Amy, and put that half cup in there. And then, let's see, tip it to the camera. Okay, stop, a little more. Yeah, a little bit more. Keep going. Yeah, that's good. So now we got the perlite, just gonna put that in there. That's half of the total amount we need. And the same with the worm castings, if you can, Get, get some of that, or if you need the shovel. Let's see, yeah, let's do two, that's only a quarter. Let's do, dump that in there and we'll do another one. Or you can fill it up halfway if you like. Yeah, a little, one, one, more, one more. Almost there, oops. All right, now put that in there. And now she's just gonna stir it up in the pot. Careful, don't hit that dryer sheet. So we wanna mix all that in the cactus mix together. And then we're just gonna do the other half of this because we're need, well, actually, we may have, dig a little deeper. We may not need to use all of that soil because we still have to make sure that our cactus that we're taking from the other container has to have room for those roots in there. So we're gonna, we're gonna create, yeah, we're gonna, Create a little divot there, and we're gonna we're gonna do another set of ratio. We're gonna do four four cups of this, one half, and one half of a cup of the worm castings. But that may be more than what we really need. To, it may overflow this because we need to make sure that we we put we put this in there, and we don't have we have room for those roots and soil. So what what we've done is we've done the right ratio at fifty percent. So let's do two half two a quarter quarter so we're gonna we're gonna break that up in, in into two cups of cactus soil instead of four more because we filled up a lot of the, the pot already so the main thing is just to keep that ratio eight eight parts cactus soil, one part perlite, one part worm castings. And if we tip that to the camera, you can see that's about a quarter cup. So that's what we need because we've done half of a half again in here. I don't know if you can grab that with the shovel. I'm probably blocking the camera and get out of the way. A little more than that in the cup. Yes. And now if you put that in there, in the container, Amy, please. That looks so good. Look how rich that is, you all. Uh. And just mix it up. Mix it with our hand. Remember when we were kids and we played in the dirt? Remember when we went to Ireland, Amy, and we played in the mud? We made mud pie? You played in the mud. Oh, <laughs> it was so much fun. Our parents, what did they, what was it? We had a horse-drawn caravan through Ireland. She was pregnant with the Bonnie, and there's six kids in a caravan. Li Liam. Liam. Liam? Liam? He made good fertilizer. Yeah. That Doesn't that look great? Oh, that looks so good. So what we're going to do now is push the soil to the side because we want to place our pencil cactus in here and make sure that she's in the, she's not planted too high. You want to, you want to make sure that you set your plant at the right height. You don't want to plunge your plant too deep. That's a, that's a thing that in general for plants outdoors, 
as well as indoors for most uh, plants. So now Amy, if you can actually take the shovel and go around the edges of this to tr kind of loosen the soil. Now she's pretty loose already because she's, she's been bouncing around when I put the stake to keep her from, from she was growing so fast she was tipping over. And now some of the roots may break free, which is no problem because this plant is so tough. Uh, that's not going to be an issue. Now this piece that broke off here, I don't know if you can see that. This is this actually will root. And you can see some of the, the, the milk coming off of that, that sap. That's the stuff you don't want on your skin. But this will actually root. It'll take a while to grow. You typically want, you know, like we mentioned before, a bigger piece to, if you're going to uh, propagate the plant. So now we're going to lean it over and tip it here. And then we're going to carefully try to grab the, pull those roots out. Okay. Oh, and there went our perlite. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Amy. Oh, the perlite fell off the table, you all. It's all over the floor. Well, that's, hold on. This is a little too high. So if you just hold it there for a second, I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to pull some of that soil out. I'm going to push it down to here. I'm going to set it in. Now I'm going to take these stakes out. I'm going to hold the plank. Can you pull those stakes out of me? This one as well. And we're going to restake her in a second. We want to get her in the pot. So we move some of that soil around the other side there. We just want to tamp her down. And we'll come back here in a minute and we'll add some water. But we also want to make sure that we get rid of air pockets. Putting water in this container will definitely help with that. That will help remove any air pockets. Okay, so here's this one. This one actually has. Oh, look at this! You guys got. You have our own little plant. Oh, look at that! Woo woo! You have a bait. We could do another thing in this one, but I think I want to grow this one with that. All right, so you're holding her. I'm gonna get a stick. I'm gonna put this one over here. Look at you! I didn't know that. Got two, two kids, two, and one. Now I'll put the stake back in. So we can get her to stay upright. Now you have that little tight clamp. Do this again. Pull on it. Let's see. Let's see if that holds her for now. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Wow. You nailed it. That's at the right height and everything. Wonderful, Amy, wonderful. So we're gonna get some more stakes and put them put them in there. But, but what we wanna do now is we're gonna tell you a little bit about how you can take care of this plant. But what we'll do, we've gotta <laughs> we got clean up a little bit off the floor, but we'll come back in a second and we'll tell you about uh, plant care for each of these plants. Before we go into talking about plant care, I forgot to mention one more thing we do on repotting plants the mycorrhizal. So what we, we do, there's two ways to do this that we have found that works well. One is you can add a quarter tablespoon of the mycorrhizal below the, the pot soil that you, your, the plant that you're repotting from into that new mix and, it, and let the roots sit on it. But we also like to do this because this will mix in with all the existing soils. We, we like to coat the top all the way around because this needs to permeate through the potting mix, the medium that we created. And then we add water and all that will start to percolate through. So if Amy will add water to the plant, oh, hold up, we wanna put we got a little plastic plate there to hold the water. We gotta get a tray for her still. And then hold, stop for a second, let that soak in. Go around a little bit, please. And thank you. And you see how the microwave is a little dry? Can you add a little water to it over there? To get that, there you go. Now all that is permeating down over here just to, to add water. Let's hold off for a little bit and see if it comes through. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you water well initially. So we've, this is this is starting to percolate through. In a few minutes, we'll come back and add more. Sometimes you can go around with your finger after you do that first. And, oh, we have another one. Woo we're going to have another baby. Again, oh, look at these, all these down here. So we have several. These you just sit out for about a week and they'll harden. This one's kind of already hardened. So 
must have been sitting there for a while. And you just pop them in the ground and they'll grow. Super easy, super cool. And yeah, maybe a little more here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate over and tell you about plant care. Plant care for both your pencil cactus and mistletoe cactus is very similar. Let's talk, let's talk first about the pencil cactus and we're gonna talk about lighting. She will do great between two and 300 foot candles of light. She can do less and that's, that's like medium light. If you go over 500 foot candles, she'll, she'll be okay. Doesn't have a problem, you can even go higher than that. This plant, this plant can you know, grow outdoors here in South Florida, but indoors you, you don't want to necessarily put them right up against a, a window because they can, they can get a little bit of sunburn, but they're, they're pretty tough that way. We've had ours on our west facing window getting well north of a thousand foot candles and we've also had her at different parts of the house 200 foot candles and she does great this is a very very easy low maintenance plant that's the but the main thing on lighting it's right between two and three hundred she's going to do fine on the soil mix we've kind of already talked about that with the uh, repotting here you want to do 80 <laughs> percent. that's perfect Amy. 80 percent of cactus mix and with that you want to add 10 percent perlite 10 percent worm castings mix that all together real well and then add that quarter teaspoon of the mycorrhizal as we showed you and that's a great potting mix to keep your keep your pencil cactus happy now on watering this is this plant does not need to be watered that much you you can go easily one month between watering and you you can use your your finger and go down two knuckles at that two week period to see if it's wet and if or if it's moist and if it's still moist then you can hold off a couple days on watering you don't want to overwater this plant being a succulent, it wants to, it, it holds a lot of water in its leaves, so you don't have to you don't have to water it that much. Now, on fertilizer, you can use a well balanced 202020 in the growing season from April to, through September, but you don't necessarily have to. We do because we we love our plants and we and, and it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt the plant at all. For for temperature and humidity, she's going to do fine between 60 and 85 in the home and 40 to 50 percent humidity which is you'll get typically around 40 percent with home ac and she'll do she'll do fine with that so it's it's not a problem you do you do want to avoid putting her near draft where she can get a draft like directly under an ac unit that that's something you want to avoid but we have like i said we have had ours in many different locations in our home and she's done pretty well the one thing the big difference between this plant and the mistletoe that we have found is that she gets spider mites and she got clobbered and the spider mites form these tiny webs all in these little creases. And if Amy, you can point to some of those creases in the notches. They'll get up in there and they can really, really attack this plant. So you gotta be, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful and keep an, keep an eye out for that. We'll be doing written care instructions of all that we're just speaking about here. So don't worry, you can take a screenshot in a second and you can have all this information for, for taking care of your plant. But that's a, that's a big thing to, to, to know about this. We did get spider mites and it was a big, big problem, but, but she hasn't had it for, for eight months and she's she's just doing great can you get spider mites in the house yes and we've got we yeah it's it's usually comes like when you get it from gives you another plant and that one has and it jumps from one plant to another it's it's wild because if you're growing house plants and you don't have them all of a sudden you do like how, where did it come from it typically comes in piggybacking off of some something else that you bought even you know like you know sometimes people give each other orchids for for the holidays or whatever so that's usually what we have found is when we buy stuff so it's good to quarantine stuff in actually when you get a new plant home bring it into a part of your home where it's not right next to everything and see how it does and you can always just do a preventive like spray it down with neem oil to make sure you don't have any of those little buggers now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to rotate over and tell you about the mistletoe and i think we'll set up the camera a little bit over there so we can tell you about this wonderful plant and how you can take care of it before we go into talking about the mistletoe, Amy wants to let you know. Amy, what do you want to tell people with your thumbs thumbs like up? Us. Oh yeah, don't forget to like, like and subscribe on our channel. Thanks. So now back to the plant care video. Let me hold that. If you could lift her up, the mistletoe, and show folks how cool this plant is. This plant is an epiphyte native to South America, and she she's very similar in that she wants similar lighting as the, the pencil cactus two to 300, she's not finicky and moving around the home, you can give her higher. She is gonna cascade, but
But on watering, similar as well, you can water a little bit more. For this plant, you can water every three weeks or so. But you also want to also check using the, the two knuckle rule, we call it, or put a bamboo skewer in there down a few inches. And if it comes back moist at that three week cycle, you can hold off on the, on the watering. Now for temperature and humidity, she wants a little bit, she has a little more tighter range in the window of what she wants for her AC between 60 and 80. She, she wants more, more of that, but we've had our you know, home and wind, you know, springtime when the AC's off, it's, both of these do fine with the same, same temperature anywhere between the 60 and 80 degrees, but she wants higher, higher humidity than the pencil cactus. So we have, we, we will sometimes place her on a pebble tray so that that moisture will evaporate and help the plant. But they're both very, very tough plants. You don't necessarily have to put a pebble tray. She, she prefers that. So she'll do a little bit better and grow a little bit more. But, but boy, the, the, the pencil cactus I have, I'm sorry, the mistletoe cactus I have found grows a little bit more robustly than the pencil cactus. But I, I just love them because they're both so similar, but yet so different, right, Amy? Right. Yeah, they just got this really cool, really cool vibe now on now on pests we haven't had any issues with spider mites on the mistletoe cactus and maybe there's just something that's not sweet for the insects to chew on with that i don't understand because they were right next to each other and this one got not one spider mite and the pencil cactus was loaded so it's it's just wild now it's not to say they won't get them they won't necessarily they can get mealybugs and and aphids and other other pests but you know the main thing to look out for, I would say, for these plants is just spider mites, and, they, and you can use neem oil to control. So with that said, what we want to do now is we're going to rotate over into written care instructions, and then we'll come back and do a quick closing at the end. All right, let's go on to that step. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. Do you have any questions before we go, Amy? No, nope, I think you answered them all. I really want to thank you so much. She's the best, the best sister, my favorite sister over Bonnie and Mary Dell. He children. says that to each one of us <laughs> when we're around them. Don't so, believe them. So I always, say, I always get myself in trouble with this. So if you have any questions, please just leave them in the comment section. We'll make sure we get back to you. And until the next video, bye. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family, we post videos weekly. Thanks!